Welcome to Iron TV's new show, Being Muslim, hosted by me, Oli Noor. Every week we'll have special guests with us uh, to discuss uh, matters that are related to their fields. And these guests will be coming from a wide uh, variety of uh, professional and academic backgrounds. And they'll be discussing what part of their faith and uh, what, what part of their faith relates to them in how they work. And to this week, as we know, we have gone through a very strict lockdown in the UK. And what has happened is that for many people, this means that they have been cut off from the mosques and they have been uh, stopped from attending the many classes and circles and many, many services at the masajid, the mosques benefit in the UK. And this is not the first time that we've been through this. Uh, as we know, we have faced through this uh, very harsh times, very hard and difficult times earlier on in the year. And by the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, alhamdulillah, we've managed to uh, have a few months uh, with the uh, mosques being open. And so I thought it would be good, uh, I thought it would be very beneficial for us today to discuss the status of the mosques uh, as it is in the UK, not only as it relates to us, but what the mosque means to us as Muslims, as, as parents, as children, what the mosque meant in the Prophet Sallallahu lifetime. And so uh, to discuss the, the place of the masajid uh, in general and during the lockdown, we have our special guest with us today, uh, Sheikh Saleh, who is an Imam of Greenwich Islamic Center in South London, South East London. That's right, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Sheikh, Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. Wa Alaikum Salaam wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. Barakallah Feek. So how are you, Sheikh, today? Alhamdulillah, very good. Um, mm. We are just sad with our uh, mosques that um, are not accessible and uh, um, they, we have got government restrictions that we cannot um, have congregation prayers. We are doing now individual prayers, but mm -hmm. at least um, uh, there is something that we are doing in our masajid and that is the situation that we are facing now, yes. Mm -hmm. So to better understand what yes. the mosque means, I yes. thought that this time uh, would be a good time for reflection Absolutely. and a time to ponder upon what the mosque should mean to the Muslim community. So can you tell us what the purpose of the mosque was during the Prophet Sallallahu lifetime? Uh, billahi min ash rajim, bismillahi rahman rahim. Um, the, um, this is a very uh, important um, uh, thing that uh, uh, majority uh, of the Muslim community need to understand and especially the non-Muslim community. They have to know how important the places of prayers are and in uh, specifically the mosques, especially the mosque in a community whereby uh, people are living. Uh, because uh, look at the mosque, uh, a lot of people think the mosque is a building mm. and um, the mosque is not a building. The mosque, uh, a building is uh, one of the things that um, are there to serve the community. But the real mosque is what is happening in the community and what the mosque is uh, for. Mm. Uh, we go back to the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he entered Medina, the first thing that he looked at is to establish a center. And this center happened to be a mosque mm. that later it, 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 it became uh, a very important institution in the community. So you look at the uh, first thing that the mosque came, um, the Prophet came to Medina, he built a mosque, and what happened after that? Was the mosque only a place where people used to go and pray? No. The mosque is actually a community center. Look at a community center. For example, in England today, we have got um, leisure centers. Yeah. Look at the leisure center. What does the leisure center serve to the community? So the mosque in the time of the prophet was more than a leisure community, a, a leisure center. So you find that the mosque during the time of the prophet is a place whereby disputes could have been brought into place and discussion. The um, children will come in there to learn. Uh, elders, elderly, and the uh, uh, families, who, women, they all came 
to the mosque and the mosque used to serve them. So during the time of the prophet, you find that the mosque was also a place whereby um, a, a courts, the disputes were settled. Mm. Okay, um, it is a place of training where people go for training. It is a place whereby people used to uh, sit down and discuss. You don't have anything to do. You go to the mosque, sit down, you meet friends and everything. Look at Juma. Yes. When Juma comes into being, you find that is the time that you have not seen friends and families who are from a distant, far away. That is where they meet. That is where when they come and discuss discuss, you will find the affairs of the people when um, someone has been having some problems. And this is when they used to meet on Friday and discuss these problems. So the, uh, the, the mosque is a center, it, it occupies a central position in a community. Okay. and especially in the Muslim community. Because right now, uh, we are having virtual mosques that you find people now, they, uh, not, uh, not virtual salahs, is that hardly in a day that you will find that a mosque or a, a center, wherever it is, if it has got connection, uh, or the leaders have got connection, like us imams, that we receive not less than 10 to 15 calls in a day. And then you find that you need to solve a problem through the phone, which at times it becomes difficult because this is a, a, a problem that you need to see somebody physically, explain to him, talk to them. And the only place that you could have done that, it's good to, in the mosque. Yeah. That is where, what we are facing in the uh, in United Kingdom today. Yes. Okay, mashallah. It sounds like the, the masjid, uh, even during the Prophet Sallallahu lifetime, it was more than as I understand from the Arabic word, yeah. uh, it's related to the word uh, sajda, sajda, masjid. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, it's, it's more than just a place of sajda. sajda yes. And um, it sounds like the, this uh, uh, this tradition of uh, the the mosque being a not only a center of arbitration but a center for uh, finding uh, for for seeking solutions to exactly. problems. Exactly. It's something that has continued yeah, exactly. uh, one way or another till today. Exactly. Mashallah. Yeah, mashallah. And I wanted to ask, with related, uh, you mentioned the um, the, the digital, uh, or the, uh, what was the word that you used? Yeah, the uh, virtual, the, the yeah. Virtual, <laughs> the virtual, the virtual masjid. <laughs> and to be clear, that's not the virtual salah. Yeah. And so, so with the closure of the of the masjid, um, once again, as it has happened earlier in the year for, for uh, how many months was it? Four? Oh, almost, yeah, almost five, six months. Almost yeah, five, yeah, six yes, months, absolutely. subhanAllah. Yeah, yes, yes. So with regards to the closure of the mosque, um, and especially during the time of a pandemic or uh, as it used to be in, in the past epidemics, is this something that is completely new to our time or has this uh, ever occurred in the past, do you know? Well, um, the, uh, from the history you find that the pandemic has not been, this is not the first pandemic has mm -hmm. happened. Uh, you read into, into books and you read in the history, actually, uh, you find that they say a hundred, after every hundred years that there is a pandemic coming. But the question, specific question is, has it happened whereby the masajid have come to have been closed down and no activities are happening? No, we don't have any evidence that there is a, a pandemic which happened, that people, uh, uh, people's mosques, the community mosques were shut and no activities will happen in that mosque. What we have learned and what we understand is that the Western world picked the idea of segregation or cutting, um, um, which is the best word to use, to, the bubbles, to, to put people in the bubbles. So, so you find that today we know that the law is that if you are from Manchester, you cannot leave Manchester, you cannot enter Manchester. Mm -hmm. I understand even in Scotland, the leadership in Scotland, they have completely ordered the uh, Scottish people will not leave Scotland and no one will be allowed from England to go to Scotland. Scotland yes. for a duration of time. So this is something which has been borrowed from Islam. So Muslims, what they did and the leaders of Islam that time is that when there was a pandemic like this one we are facing, that people from one town to another, they will not leave 
from one place to another. And there is that information from Umar ibn Abdul Khattab that we understand he's the first one who started uh, this um, idea of um, uh, stopping people from those who were coming from Syria. When there was a plague, mm. the people who were coming from Syria, they could not enter the um, Khalij, they could not enter um, Medina or Mecca, and people from Mecca could not leave to go to uh, uh, other places. Mm. So we find that did the mosques shut down that time during those time? No. Why is the mosque being shut down at this moment? Because the situation is different. Now you find that the um, the um, the world has become like a community, uh, a community village. A, 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 uh, yes, I think we call it a, a global village. Yeah, global village. Yes. So you find that um, the, the, the situation is different, mm. and maybe uh, anyway we can say also the um, uh, our government act very uh, uh, very late. So whereby we could not find the lockdown as soon as possible. Whereby, mm. if it had happened, yes. that I think there was unnecessary for the centers and the community centers, the mm. mosques, the, uh, the the gyms and the the, the the churches and all this kind of. They could not be shut down mm. if the pandemic was realized from the beginning. From the um, and then the lockdown the lockdown comes. Uh, immediately after that has been realized and they could have borrowed a leaf from us that we uh, when the information came whereby there was a plague a pandemic a plague which has erupted in a certain uh, location or a certain area or a certain country these other countries are informed as soon as possible and the shutdown starts so these people who were here are safe Yes. They are not going to interact with people from elsewhere. So in that case, that the mosques were not shut down, mm. but the mosques are shut down now because it was left to spread, and the disease has spread in such a way that it is um, um, even families are stopped from um, meeting other families. Yes. So the law that we have now is that um, no um, household will meet other household in, in, indoors or outdoors. If they meet outdoors, they have to meet in, um, uh, in a very uh, well ventilated, well, uh, area. ventilated area and this kind of. So yes, the mosque were not shut down. This is the first time in the history that we can see that the mosques are being shut down, centers are being shut down, families cannot meet. Mm. Yeah, so this is something new. It is something new, and we have to live with it. I remember a few months ago, there was some uh, video circulating uh, on WhatsApp and such, uh, where historically the adhan would be given uh, d during the time of an epidemic. Yes. Instead of hayya al sada come yeah. to prayer, it would be salufi buyutikum. So, salufi buyutikum, yes, yes. So, um, yeah. Is uh, absolutely. So, solifi buyutikum is pray in your homes. Mm. So, you pray in your homes when there was a pandemic, but the mosques were not closed down. Mm. They were not shut down. They were not stopped people from coming to do the prayers. Mm. So, the idea, the idea is that uh, when there is rain, for example, yes. there is much rain which has uh, uh, fallen into uh, the town or in the city. Mm. So, instead of people moving with those difficulties to come to the mosque, they are asked to pray in their homes. Solifi buyutikum, pray in your homes. Yeah. So, when there is a pandemic, okay, solifi buyutikum is good. Pray in your homes is better. Mm. But if you come to the mosque, will you to be told that the mosque is closed and go? No. Yeah, That's so true. that is how it yes. is. Yeah, so um, um, the, but now we we, we 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 are letting people not to come and pray jamaa. Subhanallah. Yeah, that is that is something new that we have mm. uh, we have found. There is nowhere in the history that people were really stopped to come to the mosque and pray. But it has happened in our lifetime, and this is a situation that we have to live with it. We have to understand it, and we have to look a way of how we are going to solve these problems that we are facing, and what it it shows that it is something which is will go on and on until the vaccine is found. And even if the vaccine is found, mm. there will still be some time, some area, some situation that it will come that we are going to be um, uh, very careful um, uh, to, 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 to let us, um, th there won't be, life will not be normal as it yeah. was, yeah. Okay, subhanAllah, jazakallah khair for that clarification. Yeah. And another point that you mentioned earlier about the virtual masjid. No, absolutely. So in terms of the services that 
uh, mosques are able to give. Yes. Um, what sort of services have you seen that are m maybe th they, they were in place before or, or uh, many masajid have started to implement these as, as a new way forward? And uh, what do you think of the, w what sort of services are out there? Absolutely. Look, look yeah. into this. A very simple, uh, a, a very simple um, uh, situation, you look into it. Mm. Now the mosques are closed. Yes. The main service that the mosque performs and gives. The salah. Uh, my brother. Mm. It's not salah. No? It is not salah. Okay. It is learning. The learning of the um, religious activities um, like studying the Quran, l l reading the, 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 the Islamic uh, uh, studies for the children and everything. Mm. That is the main service that the mosques are giving. The most people have in mind that yes. when you are going to the mosque, you cover yourself properly because you are going for solar. Solar is a very a small, a, 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 a ten percent of the service that the mosque is supposed to be giving, because solar is there. Solar can be prayed everywhere, you know. Yeah. Well, those are kind of, so look at the learning of the children. Mm. Now the learning of the children. I know some families who have been, since lockdown, their children, they have been suffering, struggling. Where are their children going to learn? The deen. They call it the deen, a combination of Quran, um, salah, learning salah, learning fiqh, learning tawheed, learning hadith, learning all these kind of things. Mm. Where are they learning? All these have been transferred into Zoom classes, virtual classes. This is one of the things. That the mosque, now the mosque have been, these services of the mosque have been transferred to the virtual classes. Look at the counseling and um, activities uh, such as um, uh, marriages and uh, discussion of uh, other matters, as I mentioned earlier, that you find all these services have transferred into the Zoom call, mm. into the calls uh, on the phone or on the, on the, uh, on the computer, on the um, video calls and all this kind of thing. So these are services that have transferred to the uh, to, 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 to other areas, to yes. other uh, venues. So it becomes very difficult because some of the, act some of the uh, activities the mosque sa gives, they run very well when you are meeting people one to one. Mm. Imagine, am I, are we going to legalize marriage through Zoom? You know, this is a question that I would love. This is a discussion that we, are go we need now to start thinking yeah. about it. So is the marriage, can a marriage happen through the Zoom? Because three times, I'm telling you, three mm. times I have received a call, one call from um, France. That was somewhere in April, May. Yes. So the mahram, mm. the mahram of the lady, I know some of the uh, some of the um, uh, tra Muslim uh, traditions that the mahram is not, but the mahram is in France, and the daughter is getting married who is in Engla England, in Britain. Yes. So they could not come; they had to attend that marriage through the Zoom. Another meeting happened is that there was already a plan for a couple to get married. Mm. This couple was in Ireland. And the lady is in breed in England. Okay, mm. so they wanted to have the marriage because the date has already been set, and everything was ready. So they wanted only the imam to be there to confirm that this guy is getting married to this one, and this one is giving permission to this one, and everything. So there was a long discussion. It is a long discussion which had happened, and eventually we had to postpone the, because you, uh, we don't have new fatwas. We don't have new fatwas that uh, the marriage can happen in that form, and um, it will depend with individual imam what he's going to do. So to myself, in this, I decided that let us postpone this meeting mm. until when I am physically know that this is the guy who is getting married and this is the lady who is getting married or this is the mahram of the lady who is getting married so we could do that nikah but it becomes uh, that those discussion were all of them virtually so these are services that have transformed to be i call that the virtual masjid
the mm -hmm. virtual masjid, but the virtual masjid will not have solar. And there are khutbas which are also happening in the uh, online. You find there are some people whom ask, oh, Imam, uh, so now can I open the TV in Mecca? And then I listen to the khutbah of Makkah, and then I do the salah following the people who are doing the salah in Makkah. Is this possible? Can, it, can, can I do that? So you find people now are start coming up with so, many, uh, with so many things. So it is a destabilization of life. I can say that. SubhanAllah. So it sounds like yeah. um, a lot of the services that were coming from the mas masjid, uh, it has be because it has stopped in, in, in the physical forms, exactly, it sounds like yes. it has brought on uh, a lot of new, uh, uh, maybe problems is the wrong word, or yeah, it is the course, right yeah, word. Yeah, uh, it, br it brings up a lot of new questions in how to uh, go forward with this digital Absolutely. life. Yeah. And which, which in one way or another, because life has to go on, yes, life yes. has to continue, mm. and we cannot shut down the deen, the religion, we cannot shut down the Islam because there is no mosque. Yes. We cannot shut down the deen because now the imams, there's the, the mu'allimas, the maulanas, the, 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 the rest of the people are not available, mm. so we shut down the deen. There is no switch to do that. So the only situation is that to come up, to accept, to adapt into the new norm to adapt into the new situation that is happening in the world now. Because we find that even businesses are shutting down and they are relocating to virtual uh, business, you know? So, yes. the, you, you, so even Muslims and um, um, uh, the, the communities that we are heavily depending on the mosques, now we also need to have discussions on how we are going to adapt with the, uh, with the new situation that we are facing, and then we, um, uh, we open up to uh, the new technology. Because if we shut down our minds, mm. and we shut down, we say that um, this is bid'ah, as this is the, the, the word which is being use so to use these things are bid'ah and all this kind mm. of thing so we will be dragging behind our children will be left behind our islam our families will be uh, w w will have many problems so yeah. the situation now is for the scholars of the deen for the muslim molanas for the muslim um, thinkers mm. for the muslim we come up together with an idea on how we are going to uh, think of adapting into the new situation situation and the life has to go on and you use the word new situation and i think yeah. it's important to stress that a lot of things that we uh, that the masajid have been coming out with absolutely uh, in, in the last few months it is though it is a new situation we pray to allah that it is a short and temporary situation yeah, yeah. and that uh, we can go back to something uh, more of a back to normal life inshallah if, if we can see through this these hard times there will not be normal life mm. there will be new normal life yeah there mm. is be new normal life because there is a um, look at the situation whereby uh, the, the people who have already started uh, families mm. uh, a, a parent who has uh, been struggling in bringing the child to come and learn the deen, okay, yes. in the mosque and everything. So that parent has found another um, another s teacher online, okay. So this person learns or uh, learning uh, this child learns online, uh, mm. uh, and uh, and that's it. So the parent looks at the burden of transporting the child to the mosque. Maybe the payment is, dif uh, is difficult. Oh, this child is, is with me at home, so it's, why, why should I let this child go to the mosque and then um, I have got a teacher in the uh, online. So, so you it, see... It sounds like the same reason why people switch from shopping for clothes in store to online shopping. To online shopping. So mm. people can also switch. In the, they are also switching their study, their, their, yeah. their, their, their Islam, their, their, their learning of the deen uh, from, the, uh, from the mosque to another place. They have found a new norm. Yes. Now, that's what I'm saying. So uh, there will be a pro and cons on all these kind of things. Mm -hmm. And I, I look into it. Um, somebody can ask, can you predict the future? Well, um, uh, the future is that the situation is not going to be the way it was. We have to accept that. Yeah, yeah. and I think that's an important point yeah. in realizing that yeah. because it is a very new uh, it is a uh, it, it is a situation that has uh, made us evolve and adapt to new s circumstances. Okay. Uh, sometimes we forget that um, it is something that is uh, changing our lives, and will, that change will be with us. 
and inshallah we can uh, continue talking about this uh, after the break uh, and we'll continue looking at uh, the idea of the education especially because this is as you mentioned earlier on this is one of the key components that is um, it, it doesn't only affect children but it affects uh, teenagers young adults and even uh, the elderly and I think this is one of the, um, as you mentioned earlier, the education being the main service that the masjid uh, holds. Uh, this will be something that we will explore. Thinking about how the, the, the education, uh, similar to online shopping, whether it comes to clothes or uh, gadgets and electronics, etc., uh, how it has um, changed from in person uh, to a, a, a very virtual space. And it looks like the, the teaching, at least temporarily, it's uh, moved into that space, but you feel that it is going to affect uh, the Islamic education moving forward on a, on a much greater scale. Yeah, first of all, I would like to say uh, categorically, mm. the, the, the teaching of our children, yes. and we will come to the teaching of adults and other people and everything. I, the teaching of the children is very important for our, uh, for our, in, in our Islam. Mm. Why is that so? Because, first of all, um, you are preparing you are, you are preparing your future. Yes. You are pre preparing your children. When you teach your children, when you nurture your children properly, when you bring them up into a good citizens of the world, you get reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember, first of all, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِذَا مَاتَ بْنُ آدَمَ إِنْ قَطَى أَمَلُهُ إِلَّا مِنْ ثَلَاثِ If a person dies, إِنْ قَطَى أَمَلُهُ مِنْ ثَلَاثِ إِلَّا مِنْ ثَلَاثِ إِنْ قَطَى أَمَلُهُ إِلَّا مِنْ ثَلَاثِ Every deed of this person stops. Because all actions, all deeds and everything, they stop by the dying, by death. Okay? Mm. So, إِلَّا مِنْ ثَلَاثِ Apart from three things, that you are going to benefit from them when you die. Sadaqatul Jariya, the investment that is going to remain for you is, for example, Sadaqatul Jariya, you give the Sadaqa which is continuous. The Sadaqa which you have given, which is going to uh, benefit you, is the Sadaqa that you have given and it continues producing some of the uh, goodies from it. You built a, a, a well. People are drinking water. You uh, donated for, mm -hmm. to the mosque, and then the mosque is built, and then the people are praying in that mosque. This sadaqa will continue helping you after your death. It will continue. Or the knowledge, you have acquired knowledge, whichever kind of a knowledge, mm -hmm. which is helping the people. You taught others, and these people teach, keep on teaching others. So that is a continuous knowledge that it becomes your investment that you are going to get the reward after your death. The most important one is awaladun salihun yadu'u lahu. Or you gave birth to a child. This a child, maybe girl, maybe boy, this girl or this child keeps on remembering his father or his mother who are dead. Mm. You gave knowledge to that child. You taught that child. You nurtured that child. You brought that child into an Islamic, um, up, in an Islamic upbringing. This becomes your investment that it will continue living and even if you are... Uh, 10 feet under. Okay, so these children keep on praying for you, but how are you going to bring up that kind of a child mm -hmm. who will remember you after your death? It will only be by imparting knowledge to that child, giving him or her a very good education, and which education than the education of Islam. So you teach, you prepare that child to be a your, um, um, your, your, your investment that will keep on remembering you. So knowledge is important, bringing up these children is important, and which other place you can talk about if the mosques are closed down. If a child 
knows mm -hmm. where to get the knowledge. Where is the center of getting this knowledge? So you find knowledge is important for, uh, for all of us, for adults, for children, and everything. Those adults that we are going to talk about yeah. shortly, these adults were even children of the other, other parent. Mm -hmm. So these parents are not living, for example. So these adults also, they come to learn the knowledge of the dean on how to look after their parents who are already dead. So this is a knowledge that will continue and um, it is the, uh, the important of the mosque in imparting this kind of knowledge to the community. Yeah. I noticed uh, that you use also, uh, in your beautiful explanation, you also use the word nurture and bring up yes, uh, a few times. Yeah. And uh, in, in, my, in my personal view, to do it in front of a computer yeah. screen, uh, it, because of that physical distance, it uh, doesn't allow a person to be nurtured properly or, or to be brought up because uh, because he doesn't see he doesn't see he, he does not see he does not emulate uh, uh, let me let, let me remind you something people or children whoever he is or she is they learn a lot from the actions of the people so you find that you can talk too much Mm. by teaching, learn this, learn this, learn this. But the actions that they see from you as a parent, from you as a mentor, mm. that is what will stick in their mind. So virtually, children don't learn a lot. They yes. don't learn too much. They will only learn by and seeing, touching, um, uh, actions are being performed. When that distance has been eradicated, removed, what will happen? The children will only be learning from what they hear. Yeah. And they don't see it practically. So That's the thing, yes. I'm going to take from what you said, yes. and it sounds like the primary Islamic studies, or to even say studies is, I think, in my, in my opinion, incorrect, yes. because it's, it's a holistic education, exactly. Islamic upbringing, Absolutely. maybe a better word. So the primary educator for the Islamic upbringing for the children are not the teachers, who only have the contact time in the mosques, yes. uh, or uh, as it is today uh, on, on the iPad screen or, or computer screen, but uh, the primary Islamic uh, nurturers are indeed their parents. Absolutely, yes, absolutely. Yeah, because the parent um, um, carries a, a very vital um, um, upbringings um, um, uh, for these children. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you find if a parent, uh, for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has says that the people who are among the um, uh, salihun, among the people, um, mu'minun, okay? Mm. The qualities of the mu'minun also, al-muttaqoon. So that's that's is, the believers and the pious. Absolutely, and the believers and the pious. So they perform their salahs on time, mm. okay? They perform their salahs on time. They don't delay in their salah. They perform their salahs with khushu. Yes. If the parents don't do that in their homes, mm. in their houses, if a parent who doesn't pray at home, where do you, when do you expect a child to learn prayers virtually? On by listening to a molana in uh, somewhere? No, they will only learn about salah. They will only understand how salah is performed mm -hmm. if you as a parent is doing it. The children will not lie outside if they don't see the lies are happening in their homes. Yeah. So the children will learn from what the actions that are being done by their parents. Mm -hmm. So the children will nurture, will grow up being a straight, nice and uh, reformed, um, taught, learned children with what they have seen in their homes, mm. in their um, uh, uh, community, in their mosque, and they will learn these things by seeing. And majority of these things they will learn by actions that they find from their parents, the treatment they get from mm. their parents, the, uh, the, the, the talks and actions that they're being asked by their parents to do, if the parents themselves are doing those things. Yeah. Okay. If they don't, don't expect children to, uh, it's not a rocket science. The children will not do. Mm. Yeah, so we don't bring a child to the ma'alim, to the teacher, to the imam, to the molana, and tell my child doesn't pray. The molana has to ask that parent, are you praying at home? Are you doing what you want your child doing? 
Are you refraining from what you are blaming your child? Maybe you go, you say, my child is arrogant. Mm -hmm. Are you arrogant? Are you teaching arrogant? Are you arrogant at home to your wife, to your children, mm -hmm. to, your, to your other people outside? The children will see that. A situation whereby a child who came to the home, uh, uh, there is a visitor who came uh, and knocked the door of the house, and then this father tells the child, tell that man I am not in. The child goes and say, my father said that you, he is not in. Mm. Where is he? He's inside here. Yeah. That's how it is. Uh, SubhanAllah, yes. exploring the responsibilities of the parents. Absolutely, it's, yeah. And, and the question that you've posed, it, it may be a tough question to hear or a bitter pill to swallow, but I think especially during the time of the pandemic where a lot of us have been forced to stay at home, yeah, it is... Yeah. Though it may be a harsh reality, uh, in, in my view, it, it is a very uh, good it's question a this guy, to, yeah, to reflect on exactly, yeah. and, and to truly see where we are. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you, you know, first of all, I, I, see, I see the lockdown if people are going to make um, um, a juice from the lemonade, uh, the, from the lemon, you can make your, your, your mm. lemonade, is that... If we take this um, um, lockdown, yes. that we have been forced to stay home, mm. we try to change as if it's not a harsh thing, but we learn from it and make something good out of it. Mm. First of all, we will cement the relationship between the parents and children. Yes. We will cement and know your child because during the first lockdown, you find we have our children four months at home. Mm -hmm. So you will know that child whether he's praying Fajr, Dhuhr, Maghrib, Isha, and, and, and the rest of the thing. You will see, you will understand where you go wrong and where your children go wrong. You will understand when are you going, what are you going to reform, and what are you going to change, what are you going to implement, and all this kind of thing. So in reality, if we take this pandemic and what it has come up with it, it will cement relationships at home with our children and with our relatives at home, those whom we are allowed to meet and, and sit down and eat together and understand, learn together. This can be implemented very positively and it can give very um, fruitful um, um, uh, situation afterwards. Look into this. Um, that um, there are people who did not know how to read the Quran. Yes. So they have 24 hours in their homes. They mm. can't go out. They're not allowed to go out. We look at situation like maybe Manchester and something of the sort. So you find that this is the time somebody can say, hang on, this is my time. I have got all this time. I would like to make sure that I understand how to read Quran fluently. Mm. You, can do, you can use that situation. You can, this is the time that you can say, okay, I have been delaying in performing my five daily prayers. Let me make sure that I have prayed one week consecutively my salahs on time. I am telling you, brother Olinot, these who have been doing that, mm. they try to change and they say that I was delaying in my salah. Let me try to make five days a week because I am able, I'm at home, I have got all the time. Yes. Let me make sure that I have prayed Fajr on time, Dhuhr on time, uh, Asr on time, Maghrib on time, Isha on time. This person, if he does that for three days, yes. you will find this person will reform automatically. Because I am telling you, brothers and sisters, the beauty in Salah, and understand what Salah is all about, and take that opportunity and say, let me try and do this according to what Islam says. You will find solace in that. You will find the beauty of that. You will find that thing that you have missed that has come back to you. And believe you me, from that onward, you will be very cautious and very um, um, uh, sensitive when the time of solar comes. And try. You will see it coming. Okay, mashallah, jazakallah khair for that advice. Yeah. And uh, just to finish off, we only have a few minutes left for the show. I wanted to ask, what do you think uh, with regards to, uh, we've spoken about the children, in terms of the adults, do you have any advice for adults, not only for when it comes to the salah, just like the advice you gave, but in terms of using this time to understand uh, or, or to learn from 
uh, from the religion, whether it's through the, uh, through the virtual mosque Fantastic, yeah. or, or elsewhere? Yeah, uh, uh, I will give advice to myself and to everyone who is listening to me. At this time, we have got a lot of lessons which are happening online. You can see, you can go to all sorts of websites that are just a website which are good. Um, they teach uh, 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 right knowledge and it's very important now to select or you get advice from a sheikh. Okay, yes. you see that I am going to be listening to a certain sheikhs, mm. and all his videos, his lessons, I'm going to understand. Brothers and sisters, take this opportunity. Mm. My elders and my um, my age mates, my colleagues, it is a it is the time, the ripe time, now to say that I was weak in understanding what is zakah. I was weak in understanding what is song because fasting is not only waking up in the morning and without eating and you just pray your salah and you go to sleep after eating a very heavy meal. No, I the, think uh, some people call it uh, the month of feast. The, mass, the month of feast. So it yeah. is a time now for people to open up and say, can I learn mm. this chapter of zakah? Yes. Chapter of Psalm, fasting, Rosa. I can I learn and understand what is in it all about. So you find this is a whole topic. Is a, mm -hmm. in fact, there are some scholars are calling that the topic of fasting is a school. It is a school. Okay. So whereby you enter into that topic, you learn from beginning to the end. You have been in a school or fasting and you will see the beauty of it so it is a time now to follow a certain sheikh select one of the sheikhs that you like his voice or his talks or his passion yeah. you listen to him understand take a topic say i will learn from this topic from this sheikh and take this opportunity it is a ripe time and i'm telling you that we can make sure that these changes have come they have come for the good, yes. not for the worst. And we learn a lot from that. Jazakallah khairan, Sheikh. I just want to thank you for taking your time out today. Yeah. Um, I would say on a norm normally busy day, but as we understand yeah, that... It's uh, my honor. It's the are, honor to be with uh, you here. Close now. Uh, but Jazakallah khair for your time and, and for the Sheikh. advice yes. and yes. also just the, the exploration of what the masjid yes. meant in the Prophet Sallallahu lifetime, what it does now and, and the services that the invisible services that we don't see behind the scenes. Absolutely, yeah. Sure. And uh, just a reminder with regards to the education, as, as the Sheikh mentioned, uh, please utilize this time uh, as parents are the primary educators uh, to nurture and bring up the children uh, in, in a good manner with, uh, with Islamic ethos at, 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 at the heart. Absolutely. And so, uh, Jazakallah khairan once more. Yes, sure. And inshallah, next week we will have another guest speaking uh, on, 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 the, on the topic which is relevant to their field. We will try to bring some very uh, special guests that you maybe from uh, from uh, careers and uh, professions that uh, you may not know or from backgrounds that uh, where, where they add and to the Islamic field uh, in unique ways that you may not be aware of. So please tune in uh, next week, uh, Saturday from 3 p.m to uh, be up to date uh, on on what's going on uh, behind the scenes with regards to the Muslim community. Jazakumullah khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.